And we are now bringing Casey Bean to you to give his message of hope that the Lord has shared with him. Casey, where are you right now? I'm in Bellflower, California, also known as Bellflower, USA. <laughs> Casey, I am so excited that you're here tonight. And uh, I, I, see, I see Jesus is on your wall. Now, California, well, especially L.A., has tons of sports teams. You got the Kings, you got the Lakers, you got the Clippers, you got the, 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 the Chargers, you got all kinds. But you chose to put your team as Jesus. I love that. Thank you for being Team Jesus with us tonight. And I'm just looking forward to what you're going to share. What would you like to talk about? And, and, and Mom. Mom. And mom. Oh, that's a that's a sketch. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. That's a, mom. that's a picture of my mom. How come she's so pretty and you're so uh, well Mother's Day is coming, so I, I put my picture of my mom up there. A reminder for you guys. Mother's Day is coming. For Don't those forget. moms that are alive, yes. And my mom has passed, but we, we put her ashes in the ocean, so I'll go to the ocean and say hi to her this Mother's Day. But Casey, yeah. this is your time, so go ahead. Share with us what you would like to, uh, what the Lord's put on your heart tonight. All right. Thank you. Um, anyways, bear with me this, this evening. I'm, I'm going to try, I'm trying something different. Instead of using my hard copy... <laughs> I, I still have it. I haven't thrown it out. Uh, I'm going to try to do it off of the software off of my phone. Read the verses. Hopefully, I can I can get through this. Just bear with me. It's my first time. I'm not I'm not the real computer savvy kind of person myself. But anyways, uh, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for uh, allowing us this time to come and worship you, to to reach out to you, Lord, to share you with others. Bless this ministry, Lord, that we continue on and are able to keep reaching the people of this world for you, Lord, to draw them in, to want to come to know you more and come to be your children. We love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right. Well, anyways, um, this week, I don't know if some of you might not know, but it is actually Passover. And uh, you might wonder, well, what is Passover? Well, it's in the Bible what it is. And I'm going to look be looking at Exodus chapter 11. Now this this was about um uh the the Israelites they they were they were in bondage in Egypt. Maybe if you saw the movie, the Ten Commandments with uh, Charlton Heston as Moses, and all of these, all the Israelites were were told to make bricks without straw and stuff, and they were being whipped. You know that these uh, Egyptians, they were they were cruel people. The the Israelites were slaves. They were in bondage, and um, the God's people, the Israelites, were crying out, and He says, "I heard their cry." You know, I'm going to send you to tell. Uh, um, the Pharaoh, he's the leader of Egypt, to, to let my people go. Well, Moses was like, well, who am I, Lord, that I should go talk to the Pharaoh? And God says, well, I will be with you. And and um, then he started telling him about these different signs that he would show him. There would be plague. They were actually called plagues. They were like a curse upon the land of, of Egypt. And and they were getting worse, and they had um, these different curses that they had. They had the 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 plague of the frogs that were falling out of the sky. They had uh, lice and fleas, maybe flies, and and all these things he was doing. It was like as a sign that he is God. That that Moses told Pharaoh to to let the people go. And that he is God, that he was revealing himself to him through these different these different signs. But Pharaoh just hardened his heart and wouldn't let the people go. A lot of people might think that that was the reason why 
God was um, pouring his wrath out. He, what it was doing is his wrath is it, it, that is his way of, of judgment, what he calls his judgment upon the, the, um, the Pharaoh and the people of Egypt. Well, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and read from Exodus chapter 11. It says, And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. And this one more plague is the last one. It's the tenth plague. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out of here altogether. Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from his na her neighbor articles of silver and articles of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Then Moses said, Thus says the Lord Almighty, oh, no, thus says the Lord, about midnight, I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant, who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the animals. Then there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast. That you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out, and all the people who follow you. After that I will go out. Then he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. But the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not heed you, so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go out of his land. So he didn't let the, the people go. And, you know, God was going to cause another uh, another plague upon upon them. <clears throat> and that's where it's, it talks about in Exodus chapter 12 about the, the Passover. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. And they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water but roasted in fire, its head with its leg and its entrails, you shall let none of it remain until morning. And what remains of it until morning, you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with the belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Oh, 
Okay, so anyways, um, God is going to uh, strike the land of Egypt. And he say he's, he's not only going to strike the people, the firstborn of all the people, but even of all the animals. And that, and, and that should have been a sign that, that lets everybody know that, that it was God. And if they had put the blood of the lamb over the doorposts of their house, then he would know not to, not to uh, let the wrath pour out upon that household. So he, and that's why he would, they would call it Passover. He would pass over that household. And that's where they started calling it Passover. Now notice he said, you shall eat it with a belt on your waist and your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. So these people, they, they were eating their, their, the lamb and they were, they were um, eating with their clothes on, their shoes on, their staff in their hand. And, and um, they, it's like they were getting ready to leave. They were getting ready to go. You know, God told them, well, I'm gonna, he's, he's going to tell you to get out of here once I'm done with him. Once all those, all the firstborn of the land die, and they say, "Yes, it is their God." They need to get out. We need to tell them, tell them to get out of here now. You know, Pharaoh tells them that they're going to have to get out. They got to be on their way. So they got their clothes on, their belt on, and they got their sandals on, their staff in their hand. They're ready to go, ready to get out of Egypt. The land that they were, they were. Um, held in bondage they were being delivered from that land the land of bondage and that, and that is um egypt in in the bible is always a um an example of the, this world the things of this world and and before jesus came into our lives we were in bondage to this world and after we are set free from from that from the sin that we should not want to try to enter back into the world. And that's what these people did after they had left Egypt and they were they were in the desert wandering. After a while, they some of the people started saying, oh, we had it better back in Egypt because there was food and water. And they started um, grumbling about it and, and saying stuff about God because why did he send us out here to die in the wilderness? And that displeased God and he was angry with them. And so we don't want to do that ourselves after we had been set free from the bondage of, of the sin of this world to go back into the world. That would displease God. Right, so he, he put the blood of the lamb over the the doorpost and the lintel on the on their houses and that was the sign that the the angel of the lord the 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 destroyer would not come and destroy the firstborn of their families and that's what we need to do for ourselves also now jesus is our passover now it's what it says in the new testament in um in in hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 it says without blood there is no remission of sin you see that they they used to they used to offer animal sacrifices back in back in the old days before jesus they would offer up sa animal sacrifices and and that was it, it seems kind of strange that they would do these kind of things but that was god's way that was that was his his way we all, we we committed sin everybody has committed sin all, all have sinned fall short of the glory of god Every one of us has sin, and all sin is sin against God. So if 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 all sin is sin against God, and then it, it's only right that He would say which way we could be made right with Him. So like like if if um, somebody did something wrong to me, uh, one of my neighbors, something like that, they might have done something wrong. And 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 then of course they want to come and apologize, and I might I might say you know have some kind of a requirement you know wash my car or something like that you know and and they wash my car and 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 it lets me know that that uh you know they 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 mean it that they really were sorry so they wash my car so I feel good about it and that's what God that's with God you know this is His requirement is that there should be a a, a blood sacrifice. 
But now, once and for all, Jesus, who died on the cross, he died a sacrificial death on the cross, the, you know, the sacrifice for all, all the sins of the world. As it said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus is, is our, our Passover, is what it says. The, Bi the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Christ, our Passover lamb, was sacrificed for us. Uh, back in Genesis, um, Abraham, with his son Isaac, Abraham was instructed by God to take his son Isaac up to the mountain and sacrifice him. And, and God was testing him to see if he would be obedient. And he was, Abraham was being obedient, and he took his son up, up to the mountain, and, and, and he, they, were, they were going up there. And I, I, apparently Isaac knew what, what it was to, to offer a sacrifice. And they, they, were, they were on their way up this mountain, and, he, and he had, they had the wood for the fire and, and a knife to, to kill the, the, the lamb. But there was no lamb. And Isaac says, but Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. And he said, look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. So God will provide a sacrifice, will himself a sacrifice. And some people use that as, as an example that God himself will prepare that sacrifice of himself, which he did. That was Jesus. God, God prepared a, a sacrifice. That the sac Jesus is the sacrificial lamb of God. Now, in, um, in John chapter 4, the gospel according to John chapter 4, it's... Um, Well, John chapter 1, verse 29. I believe that's what it is. Yeah, it's about the Lamb of God. It says, the next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So this is John the Baptist. He he was um, baptizing people in the Jordan River. All the people of um, of Israel were coming to him to be baptized. And when he saw Jesus, he saw Jesus walking. And he told his disciples, "Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world." So he was affirming that this is the Lamb of God that would be sacrificed for, for our Passover. Now in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Uh, verse 7. It says, Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody has sinned. And without blood, there is no remission of sin. So God sent his only son to die on the cross, a sacrificial death for us. Jesus is the sacrificial lamb of God. Let's see, Ephesians. Chapter 1. 
chapter one. Ephesians chapter two. Sorry about that. Verse 13. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. By his blood, we have been brought near. We, we were far off before Jesus, before we, we accepted the sacrifice that was made as our own, as our Passover sacrifice. We were far off. We were not able to come near to God. But now, because of his blood, we have been brought near. So people might wonder, well, we've been brought near. Let's see. Now in Matthew chapter 3, verse 7, it says, uh, John the Baptist, as he was, as he was baptizing, then some of the, the leaders, the Jewish leaders came to him. And he says, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And that's what happened in Egypt was when the firstborn were being, being killed. It was the wrath of God that was come upon the, the land of Egypt. And that, that wrath, the wrath is still going to come upon this world. God is going to judge. He's going to pass judgment upon this world because of the sin, the evil, the sin. But when will that happen? Let's see. It says, uh, no one knows the day or the hour when this will happen. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. Oh, so also will coming, the coming of the Son of Man be. So when he returns again, nobody knows when this time will come. In the Bible, it, it, it even it calls it that great and dreadful day. It's going to be a great day for those of us that have accepted Jesus as our Passover sacrifice. That'll be a great time for us, but it'll be a dreadful day for those people that have denied Christ. So we need to accept Christ as our sacrifice. Now, back in the days of Noah, is what it was talking about, that God was displeased. Speaking of the flood, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That man, the men's thoughts were only e evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and the birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. He was sorry that he made made people back then. And, and, and I'm afraid this is going to be happening again. He is going to pass judgment. He's a righteous God. He must punish sin. But we need to have that, that Passover, the blood of Christ, over the doorposts of our heart. He knows our hearts. When he sees that blood over the doorposts of our heart, he will pass over us, and we will not have to die the second death. We will, we will be able to, he will allow us to live with him in heaven. 
He has prepared a place for us in heaven. All right, let me see. <clears throat> now in uh, 1 John, Chapter one says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. So it says here, the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, all what we need to do is we need to confess that we have sinned, that we are a sinner. We have fallen short of the glory of God. Confess it to him. You don't have to tell me about it. But confess it to him. We come to God in prayer. Say, Lord, I am sorry. I forget. Please forgive me for, for my sin. And then we tell him that we accept the sacrifice that was offered his son, Jesus, that to cover us by his blood. Let's see. 2 Timothy chapter 3. talking about perilous times and perilous men. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. <clears throat> that sounds kind of familiar. These are the things that are happening today. People are in love with themselves rather than loving God. And it says, having a form of godliness, but denying his power. Having a form of godliness. Do, do we not know that we were formed in the image of God? disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Yeah, that's the people today. Just turn your news on. You'll 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 hear about it. Let's see Romans chapter 1 is another uh fine example, I believe. Starting with verse 24, it says Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts. And that's what he did for Pharaoh, too. Pharaoh had already hardened his heart that he wasn't going to let the people go. He said, and that's what he's doing for these other people of this world today. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not feeding, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, 
who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Yeah, sounds familiar. It sounds like th these are the days that we're living in now, that these kind of people are out there. That part that I don't like is knowing that the, the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. They approve of that. You know, just watch your news these days. You know, they they, they talk about the, the homosexuals coming out of the closet. And, and on the news, they're, they're like, oh, we're proud of him, man. They're proud of him for coming out of the closet. No, he should not be proud of these people. We, it's a shameful thing. Get back in the closet. Hide, hide yourself. It's a shameful thing that, that they do. And, and we, we need to be able to point that out and tell people that th that's a shameful thing. They're, they're going up against God. Do they not know that these things are deserving of death? These these days, people I hear people saying that stuff like, oh, well, God is, is for a, a genocide, wiping out whole nations and stuff. No, he's not for genocide. He doesn't. God does not desire that wicked men should perish, but that that evil men should should repent and turn towards God. That's his desire. He, his desire is that people would would repent and be become obedient worshipers of him. I was thinking about the 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 woman at the well that um as as Jesus was talking to the woman at the well talking about oh well, they worship on the mountain there and and Jesus says well you worship you don't know what you worship but we know what we worship and God is looking for people to worship him in spirit and in truth and that's how we are to worship God is in spirit and in truth and that and that that spirit is we need, we don't have the physical lamb of god to to sprinkle his blood around like they used to do in the temple with the with the lambs they used to sprinkle that blood around but we have to understand that it's a spiritual thing a spiritual cleansing that that we are receiving that sacrifice of the blood the passover lamb upon our hearts that we have been sprinkled from that sin that we have been covered by that now we have to have a believing faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Not by anything that we had done. He, he's already done all the work. We don't have to do anything but believe. Before we were born, this was already done. This was done 2,000 years. Well, everybody says 2,000 years. It has not yet been 2,000 years. But it's coming up. It's almost been 2,000 years since Christ went to the cross. And died a sacrificial death for everybody for the sins of this world. And all we have to do is through faith accept that sacrifice as our own. And then when, when the wrath of God comes upon this world, which it will be coming. When the wrath of God comes upon this world, then he will pass over. And, and, not, and we will not have to spend eternity in hell. But we will be forever with him in heaven i want to look at um real quick if i may at um revelation chapter 21 this uh, is the this is the last one wait. that would be great cuz we're running a little short on time okay this is the last one but i saw no temple in it Let's see. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed 
passed away. And he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexually immoral sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you see that this is this is speaking of heaven, and that is our hope. And that is our vision as we are walking in this world. As we're walking through this world, we don't, we don't belong here. This is not our home. We have our home in heaven. So as we're walking through these things on earth, we have, we have a hope, something to keep our, our attention on, rather than looking at the things that are going on around us in this world, the evil wickedness that will discourage us. The Bible says to that man ought always to pray and not lose heart. So anyways, let's pray. Let's come to the Lord and pray. Lord, I, I'm, I'm thankful, Lord, that I'm able to share you with, with uh, the, these people, the sacrifice that was offered up for the whole whole world, for everybody of this world. All they have to do is believe in their hearts, Lord, that Jesus Christ was crucified, that the sacrifice, and that it was for them personally, each one personally. All we have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm a sinner. I, I'm I do accept the sacrifice that was offered for me, for my sin, to cover me with that blood, the blood of Jesus, a covering of my sin that you might pass over me in the time of wrath, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Casey right. from Big Star USA, thank you so much for sharing.